Good morning. I'm Joe Byrd. I'm Executive Vice President of Nurnoff. And, okay, uh, we're addressing a very large market of chronic pain, almost $80 billion. Um, there is um, a very decided trend on a very small level toward what we're doing, which is uh, PNS pain devices instead of larger scale devices. Um, our, our device solves the need that it's delivered like a drug through a needle in an office of the physician or an ASC in three minutes or less. It's, it's private, it, it has no external uh, bulge or tail or anything like that. And there obviously no drug side effects. Uh, we call it the Injectrode. We believe we'll have revenue in 12 months after a 510K approval with two uh, established predicate devices. Um, we have a great team and are, are looking to be approved uh, by next year about this time. Our ask is $8 million for Series A. We've already raised $5 million. So um, the market is large. There's no uh, question about that. Um, the royal blue circle is, is what 95% of people who have chronic pain do. They take drugs of some kind, either orally or, or a lot through steroid needle injection. Um, the blue, the navy blue pie slice is um, large scale devices uh, which are uh, implantable with a surgery in the spine or directly outside the spine, either SCS or DRG. And if you can see that tiny little orange slice, that is um, PNS pain. But we believe, and for the reasons I'm gonna describe, we believe that that part of the market will uh, grow very rapidly and essentially take over a large part of, drug, um, of, of the drug market. <clears throat> we don't feel like we're competing with the other existing devices. We believe we're competing with drugs. Uh, just to reiterate, 50 million chronic pain sufferers in the United States, 20 million with high impact limits on life or work. Um, so we are um, injecting a device totally under the skin uh, with no external tail, uh, and it couples with an electrode patch that, that powers the device uh, transcutaneously with a coupling from outside the skin with a device that's worn temporarily at the patient's, uh, in the privacy of the patient's own home. And then that device, um, that, that transcutaneous coupling then uh, powers the device, which I'm gonna show you in just a second, which extends all the way into the nerve. Uh, we believe that there's patient need for this. Drugs are not satisfying anybody. There's a lot of problems with drugs, well known, don't have to even argue that. Um, we have a great physician alignment with a net reimbursement of approximately $2,000 for uh, each uh, procedure, which compares to what can be done in a similar amount of time for a steroid injection of only $200. So we believe there's great alignment with what physicians would wanna do. So the problem is that there are really good pain devices but they're all, almost all, either very invasive and requiring an extremely high hurdle of patient need to undergo a surgery. Uh, there's also um, a need for, um, uh, so there are devices, so the, the implantable devices have bulges. You can put something back here, it's about the size of a, it's an implantable pulse generator, it's about the size of a combination lock. So you can imagine that there's difficulty with that. It has to, the wires from there have to be tunneled into the spine. Uh, it's, it's a pretty big deal. And a lot of people, when given the option, don't undertake that. Um, we, we are trying to uh, make pain devices uh, easy and democratize pain implants so that everybody is willing to do it. Uh, just an image to try to dramatize that what we're doing is uh, sort of, in, in the sense of stealth, stealth fighter, it's invisible, uh, it feels 
easy like a drug, and there are no side effects, obviously. So where we compete with drugs, we don't have drug side effects. So here's a, here's a device. It's injected through a very small 18-gauge needle. Uh, it's highly flexible, so it bunches on its own when uh, ejected near a nerve target. Uh, the clinician then withdraws the needle and can, has the option of placing another anchor through the same process of holding it stationary while it's ejected and then goes just into the subcutaneous layer and, um, and leaves it there and then exits fully. So inject all of the device inside the body and then pull the needle out and you've got a collector underneath the skin, it's a passive receptor for uh, electricity, and you put a patch on uh, periodically, um, and that's what couples with the device, and so you don't have an implanted battery, um, you don't have to wear, you don't have a permanent, well, you don't, in the case of a temporary device now, there's no patch that's actually physically attached for 60 days, in essence. So what we do is we have the fully implantable device with a periodically um, attached electrode patch. <clears throat> uh, fluoroscopy image here at a knee. Um, you can see it's bunched um, and then bunched again out near the skin. Uh, we will have an app available in a second or third uh, FDA of application. We have uh, preclinical data showing um, a one year plus transcutaneous coupling, which is stable and can drive limbs in both small and, and large animals. And we have really good resistance, uh, uh, failure resistance data showing an expected at least 10 year lifespan. So a picture's worth a thousand words. On the left is the large-scale SCS DRG device. You can see it's bulky, it's, it's good size, it's clearly something that's not comfortable to wear and sleep in and sit in a car, for instance. Um, large scar, you know, that doesn't look very appealing. Uh, there is a temporary device on the market which has found a niche um, and that niche is for quick and easy, but it's only a 60-day um, temporary um, indication approved. As you can imagine, with anything that has an external cable sticking out, and, a, and, uh, and that's just, you know, it's, uh, essentially what the temporary device has found is a, is, a, is a need for democratizing and making these devices simple, they just don't have a permanent solution as we do. On the right is our device. You can see the little red uh, needle hole where the device has been injected into a, here a pig. Um, and you can see there's really nothing that's very visible. Uh, you attach the electrode, uh, the skin-based electrode outside and you hook up and you're done. We have a great team, a lot of experience in medical devices. Um, we have a quality management system approved. We have uh, a regulatory consultant who is former head of Neurostem devices for uh, FDA. Stellar clinical involvement. Um, the head of our clinical advisory board is, the, is a recent past president of ASIP, it's American Society of Interventional Pain. Uh, physicians. Um, what he says is, I love this device is simple to place in under three minutes. This would fit typical clinical schedules replacing drug injections. That's why we say we're competing with drugs, not with other uh, bulky, very involved devices. Also a member of our clinical advisory board is the incoming president-elect of Aspen and I'll tell you just one real quick story. One of our board members, um, we, we were hosted at a strategics uh, cadaver lab about uh, a few months ago. Um, one of the KOLs that came was uh, one of their leading implant people, doctors. And uh, after the, since that cadaver lab hosted by the strategic, 
at our own cadaver lab, she expressed interest in becoming a member of our own clinical advisory board. So, we, and we have lots more clinical uh, uh, support not listed here. So, go to market in 12 months. Um, we have a goal for 30 day PNS indication with a well established pathway. Uh, we have one issued patent, 10 more pending. We've been going at this about two years. Um, we have, again, 30 day plan, extended label to chronic pain. Um, and then uh, we also have some initial feedback uh, orally from the FDA. This would be this device because it's injected as a PNS device could be used from the outside to reach the DRG, which is of course outside the spine. So that is uh, a potential uh, uh, indication as well. We have great uh, CPT codes in the U.S. for uh, placement, removal, and for consumables, the patches that need to be replaced. And here's our timeline. Um, we are pretty far along, but we do need uh, help to get to market and establish sales if necessary. We have good uh, contacts with a number of strategics, um, and we are um, uh, interested in talking. Thank you.